Jai Ho, thank you, Abhi. Abhi. Abhi Ram Saka Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. Welcome. I am honored and ready by your mercy to try to inspire your wonderful audience in something transcendental. So, uh, as I understand, I've been given a verse from the fourth canto, Paranjana becomes a woman in the next life, verse 37 of chapter number 28. So what should I do? Should I read the verse and the third part, or should I just do what yes, you want? Yes, I read the whole verse and third part. Uh, purport depends on you how much you want to read, but shloka and uh, translation and part of the purport, Maharaj. Okay. Okay. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, this is a continuation of the theme here, talking about King Malaya, Malaya Dwaja. Sit no snas bhakta varsani shut vipapse priya priye sukha dukhe itil iti dwan dwani ajayat samadarshanaha. Through austerity, King Malaya Dwaja in body and mind gradually became equal to the dualities of hot, cold and heat, happiness and distress, wind and rain, hunger and thirst, the pleasant and the unpleasant. In this way, he conquered all relativities. Hmm. The Prabhupada's liberation means becoming free from the relativities. Of the hmm. Unless one is self-realized, he has to undergo the dual struggle of the relative worlds. So in those two statements alone, there was so much meaning. We are aspiring to become free from the entanglement of the material energy. This is the actual principle of the execution of devotional service. So that liberation is the stage before Prem Pumarka Mahan, which is the goal, developing pure love for Krishna. Liberation may become free from all material entanglement. And that is done by devotional service. And Prabhupada said, unless one is self-realized, so what does he mean by self-realized? Knowing that I'm not the body, that is part one of self-realization. We have a material body. We live in the material body. We are given the material body at the time of our birth. And our material body is given under the influence of the material energy due to our, what we say, accumulated activities in previous lives. Karma, daivana, trena, as explained by Prahlad Maharaj. By karma, one takes birth, and we're given a particular body. But we, the soul, the life within the body, the pure energy, which is part and parcel of Krishna, is different from the body. So self-realization comes in two parts. For the jnanis, self-realization means to understand aham brahmasami, I am not this body. But for the devotees, that is part one, I am not this body, but who am I? That is part two, and that is the understanding that Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, that we are Jivair, actually, Lord Chaitanya explains, Jivair, Surupai, Krishnair, Nityadas. And Krishna said, Mama Maya, all living beings are intimately connected to me in loving devotional service. So that is our real identity, separate from this false identity of the relative world, which gives us so many identities based on the initial relative identity of accepting a material body. Krishna goes, uh, Prabhupada goes on to say in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna advises Arjuna to conquer all relativities 
through tolerance. Hmm. Well, here is a principle that is very much uh, foundational for our progress in devotional service, service, and that is learning the principles of tolerance. As Krishna says in this verse, uh, uh, what is that verse? Sukadukada agapayino nityas tam bharata. Happiness and distress, the dualities of the material energy come and they go as compared to the seasons that we experience. The winter comes, the winter goes, the summer is here now, the summer will soon be gone. And then instead of turning on the fans and opening up the windows, we'll be closing the windows and turning on the heaters. So we tolerate summer with this excess heat, we tolerate winter with excess cold. Tolerance is the principle that constantly is Constantly, the living entity is faith in the material world. There's so many features that we have to tolerate in this world, and one has to learn how to tolerate. And that means to become somewhat uh, free from the relative uh, experiences that we are forced upon in this world. In other words, we have to come to the consciousness that happiness and distress honor, dishonor, heat and cold, pleasant and unpleasant, comes and goes just like winter and summer season. And we have to learn how to tolerate, not only tolerate, but rise above that, these difficulties by staying connected to the spiritual platform through devotional service. And then Prabhupada goes on to explain using examples that we, in the, in the summertime, we do not like, we take bath many times because it's pleasant. In the wintertime, we don't like to take a bath because of the cold. The common man has to undergo much austerity to become equal poised before dualities. One who becomes agitated by the relativities of life has accepted a relative position and the solution is to undergo austerities, as mentioned in the Shastras, to transcend the austerity of having a material body and material existence. So then we have to perform austerities. Otherwise, without performing austerities, tolerance does not develop. <laughs> Prabhupada goes on to explain in relationship to this particular pastime, that King Malaya Dwaja underwent severe austerities by leaving home, going to Kulachala, taking his bath in sacred rivers, eating only vegetables like stems, roots, seeds, flowers, and leaves, avoiding any cooked food or grains. And Prabhupada goes on to say, these are difficult austerities in this age, it's very difficult to leave home and go to the forest or to the holy places and to adopt the process of austerity. Indeed, it's almost impossible. No one likes the idea of leaving the comforts of home and all the friends and relatives that one is surrounded by and living alone in holy places performing austerities. And it's very difficult. Prabhupada said, he said, even if one is even advised to give up meat eating, drinking, gambling, and illicit sex, one will fail to do so. These are the austerities that are given to us. And Prabhupada says, that's even difficult. What then would a person do if he went to the Himalayas or Kulachala? Such acts of renunciation are not possible. In this age. Therefore, Krishna advises us to accept the process of bhakti. Bhakti will automatically liberate a, a person from the dualities of life. In bhakti, Krishna is in the center and Krishna is always transcendental. So what does this mean? That Krishna is above all the relativities of this material energy. In fact, he is completely free from the influence of the material energy. So bhakti means to connect with Krishna on, a, on the spiritual platform. 
and connecting with Krishna means free from the relativities that come and go in this material world. And then Krishna says, the Prabhupada goes on to say, how is that achieved? By full engagement in devotional service. He quotes this verse from the 14th chapter. Uh, one who does not fall down in any circumstance, transcends the modes of material nature, and thus comes to the spiritual platform. If one is factually engaged in the service of the Lord, he automatically can control his senses, his tongue, and many other things. That means the things around us. Once engaged in the bhakti process, with all sincerity, one will have no chance of falling down. And Prabhupada makes this point, sincerity, because his sincerity is the key to success in devotional service. What does sincerity actually understand in application? That means whatever is necessary for me to become Krishna conscious, then I am willing to accept that eagerly. In other words, if I find something that's difficult, but I'm sincere, it doesn't become a difficulty. It becomes part of the process of elevating my consciousness. If something becomes easy, then naturally uh, I accept it with no second thought. But in either case, sincerity is the driving force. In other words, we also might say another meaning of sincerity is firm conviction. I will become Krishna conscious. And, and that sincerity to carry out that firm conviction is the process of bhakti. Things in bhakti we may not like and we might find difficult or we might find reasons not to follow them. And then there are things that we kind of enjoy. In either case, these amalgamate themselves on a higher platform and become one in the execution of devotional service. Therefore, a sincere devotee is not swayed by difficulties, nor what we say overly elated by the, ha the happiness that comes through devotional service. It becomes natural. Now, to reach that platform, Prabhupada, you know, emphasizes this through the, this verse where he says, one who engages in full devotional. So in other words, one has to be f fixed in devotional service always. Even if one is in household life, has many responsibilities, one has to learn the art. And this is important to understand. One has to learn the art to connect everything with Krishna in the process of bhakti. And that can be done by understanding the science through the instructions of one's spiritual master. In other words, one has to inquire from one's spiritual master how I can execute devotional service in the most, what we say, successful and effective way. If we don't do that and we speculate, then Obviously, we'll make mistakes, and obviously, we won't be able to stay steady in devotional service. Well, but ends, even if one falls down, there's no loss. Of course, this is concessionary, and we're not so much interested in, uh, you know, not succeeding. But Prabhupada said, even if it happens, One's devotional service may be stopped or stunned and choked for some time, but in the next life, there will be another chance and one begins where they left off. Of course, these concessionary points are there, but they are not seriously taken by devotees. Devotees, in one sense, don't consider concessions as being foremost. They consider it uh, the grace of the Lord only. In the case of one's, what we say, falling short of the actual goal. But the idea is to finish up in this life. Don't consider, well, maybe next life will be better. Prabhupada would always say, whatever is blocking you in this life from making an advancement in devotional service will again be there in your ne next life. And so you have to face it at one point or another. Purification is a continuation 
of, uh, of, our, of freeing ourselves from material desires and material attachments. And if we continue, and then this situation we have now is always the best situation. We should not think something better will come up in the future. And as they say, trust no future, no matter how pleasant people describe it, because no one knows the future, especially when it comes to one's next life. One doesn't know where one will be, and one can also be in a less opportune situation, and, and then again, struggle just to maintain. So, and of course, um, um, a devotee wants to uh, use all of their time in this life to actually reach the stage of perfection. So back to the essential principle of the verse is becoming free from the dualities of the material energy. And this is the nature of the material energy. Wherever there's happiness, there's distress. Wherever there's heat, there's cold. In other words, you can't get away from dualities. There's no such thing as absolute happiness. And there's no such thing as absolute uh, misery, although sometimes misery seems like that. <laughs> it can seem so long-term that it appears to be absolute. So in any case, this is the nature of this world. And one should uh, learn to tolerate it. And as Lord Chaitanya gives the formula as one of the most important verses for the devotees to both learn, understand, and apply. He says, Trinadapi, Sumi Chena Tayor Ivasa Hishnina, Amanina Mamanadena Kirtaniya Sadarahi. Tolerance is a part of that verse, and one has to be, he explains, to be more tolerant of the tree. Using the tree as the example of tolerance. One cannot find a more better example of tolerance. The tree gives shade in a hot summer and it bears the heat of the sun on its own branches and leaves, but still it gives shade. In the winter time, people use the wood of the tree to, uh, to heat their homes and to cook their food in, many, in some cases. Birds, animals sometimes use the tree to have, you know, places to live. And we find that the tree is always, uh, what we say, exploited by others for others, but the tree never complains. The tree is a living entity. The tree is also conscious, but its consciousness is subdued by the tree body or lessened by the tree body. Still, it undergoes suffering and uh, through this, there is some suffering at the tree. I remember when I used to travel in the winter time through the uh, Midwest, we would go far west into the areas of Colorado and that area there. And we would, uh, there would be these trees, they were really thin trees, small trees, but they would they would be in clumps. They would be pretty much growing close together. But in the winter time, something unusual would, would happen with the trees. The trees amongst themselves would take their branches and wrap their branches around each other. This was a feature in the winter time. You wouldn't see that in the warmer weather. And so we might say that the trees are getting sheltered from each other in the severe cold. But they also experience, to a slight degree, some difficulties in material energy, not like we experience it. So this example is what we say the best of all examples, and that's why Lord Chaitanya chose it. And he says this tolerance. Tolerance is one of the most highest and glorious qualities a devotee can, uh, what we say, develop. And it's something that is always developing. It's not that you become tolerant and then you're tolerant. You have to practice tolerance constantly. And this is the nature of this material world.
So this verse is very instructive that in order to, to get, gain the strength to perform tolerance, one has to perform austerities. And as Prabhupada mentions, and it's something that is fundamental to our practice in Krishna consciousness, it is the four regulative principles, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no nudity, no gambling. Baba said if one can chant 16 rounds and follow these four principles throughout their whole life, they can qualify themselves to return to the spiritual world. So in this age, these four things go on in daily life as ordinary. People actually become famous by uh, what we say, emphasizing these four sinful activities. <laughs> illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating, and gambling. So sin, especially in Kali Yuga, is a feature of normality for the conditioned soul's existence. The devotees are surrounded by this everywhere, and maybe because of our previous conditioning in material life, we were also engaged in these activities to some degree. But now, since we've come to Krishna consciousness, we realize that these four sinful activities, they are the foundation for freeing oneself for all sinful activities. As Srila Prabhupada mentions this, that one who can follow these four regulative principles can free themselves from all reactions of all sinful activities. These are the pillars, and this is the word he uses. Pillar means foundation in this sense of the word, of something that is uh, so stable. So these four sinful activities are the stability of all sinful activities. So one can remove these four and one can cut down the house of material existence. And so this is this is the austerity recommended in this age. And of course, there's added austerities, like the chat 16 rounds every day, early, as early as one can, and uh, engage one's time and energy in serving the Lord and serving the Lord by serving the Lord's devotees. Serving the devotees means to serve the Lord in the best possible way. Especially the, the pure devotee of the Lord that service is the highest form of service that one can render and is very pleasing to, this, to, this, to the Lord by, by purely serving the pure spiritual master and by pleasing him in our execution of devotional service. Okay, so these are some of the principles we can think about in relationship to this verse. So two things that we have to develop tolerance and tolerance is developed by austerity. Austerity is following the principles as given to us by Srila Prabhupada in our practice of devotional service, especially these four regulative principles. If we feel it's necessary to add other austerities, we may also do that. Of course, the, the scriptures also recommend fasting on the Akadasi day, um, giving in charity, especially during uh, auspicious times of the year. And so these are added austerities that one can undergo, undergo uh, learning how to work with others and execution of one's devotional service. This is also an austerity. So they're just the process of bhakti itself is fraught with or what we say, laced with various types of austerities. It's meant to develop the proper consciousness where we can serve the Lord with devotion. Austerity leads to devotion. As it says, knowledge leads to austerity, austerity leads to devotion, or devotion leads to Krishna. Okay, so... We'll take some time and see if there are any questions or comments.
Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, devotees, uh, please, uh, you have any question, concern, or any uh, clarification uh, seek from Maharaj? Please go ahead. Maharaj, I have one question which is related to this verse, but uh, uh, related to also your uh, early days in Krishna consciousness. What was the driving force to go through the austerities? Uh, all of you went through during the initial days when there was no facility, there was no uh, temple, everything was uh, just beginning. And then the kind of austerities you went through, we cannot even imagine. Just like Srila Prabhupada is mentioning in this shloka that uh, it is difficult to have austerity life in uh, today's age. What was the driving force? Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> he was the driving force. Not only was he able to awaken within us the desire to perform austerities, but he was doing it himself. <laughs> It's not that he was just speaking, he was performing austerities that we couldn't even follow. Devotees had so many experiences being with Srila Prabhupada. How many hours a night he slept was, he couldn't even come close to that. In the evening he would sleep one or one and a half, two hours in the evening, and a little bit of rest during the day and, and continue all day in devotional service. And that was one of his austerities among so many others. The other austerities was dealing with trying to spread Krishna consciousness despite so many obstacles and so many reverses that came. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada was the driving force, but he inspired his leaders also in the same way. And those leaders were inspiring the general mass of devotees. In my personal case, I had a leader who was also very austere and very devoted and also was very expert at presenting Srila Prabhupada's teachings. So having that on the local level and also hearing of Srila Prabhupada and reading his books, we developed a real, let me say, attraction for practicing Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness seemed like the most wonderful thing we ever had ever come across. And it was at that time, and still is, of course, it's even gotten better. But at the time, we couldn't compare it with anything else. And the experiences we were having, especially in Kirtan, and uh, the Prashadam was outstandingly wonderful. Everything was so nice. It was like entering a whole new realm of happiness. Therefore, these difficulties that apparently were, we were faced with were great opportunities to show our appreciation for Prabhupada. In fact, the devotees in those days, they were eager to get an instruction for, from Prabhupada, just so they could do something for Prabhupada and please Prabhupada. Prabhupada was the force because the devotees wanted to please Prabhupada. Prabhupada attracted our hearts and minds so strongly, not only by his instructions, by his, by his, but by his personal nature, uh, that devotees was just, whatever Prabhupada wanted, we couldn't wait to carry it out. So that, that force was there. And Prabhupada, of course, is still with us in the form of his Vani. And that Vani carries us continually that we want to still feel, please feel a Prabhupada by accepting his guidance and instructions in devotional service. Thank you, Maharaj. Yo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to yourself. Glories to Prabhupada. Well. Very good. Uh, Maharaj, I have one question. Um, when reading uh, Nectar of Devotion, um, one of the characteristics of pure devotional service is that it brings auspiciousness immediately. You know, pure devotional service brings auspiciousness also. And uh, while reading that section, Prabhupada mentions that those who are 
those who are not in krishna consciousness they do not have any good qualities mm-hmm. so how do we understand that because you know we see our parents our relatives lot of friends who are who do have saintly qualities they may not be following krishna consciousness or they are not in you know um, they are not practicing bhakti yoga but we do see good qualities in them so how do we understand that statement that uh, uh, those who are not following krishna consciousness they do not have any good qualities yeah that's prophets re connected to a verse in the fifth canto 18th chapter verse number 12 yes yes the bhakti bhagavate kinchana sarvaguna astasta to to me sada arava bhakta stato mahaguna namo rutena sati dayato bahi 51812 that verse explains that in detail do you have it with you fifth canto 18th chapter verse number 12 and prophet is using that verse to make a point and in that verse that explains that those who are working under the influence of the material energy because they are not on the transcendental platform or are not on the spiritual platform the material energy is always shifting and therefore their good qualities come and go according to the shifting of the material energy aha uh-huh. is this the verse uh i think yeah that's it all the demigods in their world and exalt such as religion nonsense become manifest in the body of one who is developed by the lord devotional service for the priest the priest personality of the pastor on the other hand persons devoid of devotional service engaged in material activities have no good qualities then it goes on even if he is adept at the practice of mystic yoga or an honest endeavor for maintaining a family and relatives he must be driven by his own mental speculation and this must engage in the service of the lord's external energy how can there be any good qualities in such a person so here one who is engaged in the service of the external energy the good qualities are based on what we say a sense of selfishness people are, have good qualities in order to gain something material but the body's good qualities all automatically manifest in their relationship to krishna through the through the engagement of devotional service so using this particular understanding is that we see there is a person called the moral materialist um he's very moral gives in charity generally might have a, a nature of kindness towards others but it's all about himself as long as one keeps one's self in the center of all one's activities then that destroys all of one's good qualities mm-hmm. so of course we see even in the material world people have a sense of regard to others and people are kind to others and want to do good to others we can say that that is a good quality but it's covered still by the material energy Mm-hmm. So Srimad Bhagavatam gets right to the point. So Prabhupada's point is to somehow give us a clear division between the good qualities that are adopted in material life through one's own endeavor to further one's what we say success in material life and those good qualities that come by by execution of one's devotional service. There's a distinction like that. So don't, we don't disregard people who are pious like you say family members may be kind they also may be pious they may be generous also but still unless people come to the platform of selfless service and then those good qualities are mixed with their own motivations so we have to understand this require this verse and in this understanding we requires some explanation but we don't speak like that to to people who are not the devotees we appreciate them for who they are <laughs> and we can appreciate but we understand if they just use their good qualities in service of krishna then their good qualities become established as a spiritual principle 
and then their good qualities become even greater. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Is that helpful? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Ram Tirtha. Um, Maharaj, I have another question. If, if there are no other questions, I would like to ask one more about uh, chanting of the holy names. Um, we, we read in uh, scriptures that if one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra even once, so all the sinful reactions that are there from millions of lifetimes, they are er eradicated. Once purely. Once purely. But we, uh, but we do see in, uh, in some places where even if one um, uh, chants the holy name, um, even jokingly or even offensively still, it removes the uh, sinful reactions, in sinful, all the sinful karma that they have from millions of lifetimes. So yeah, that, that is called Nama Bas. Yeah. yeah. But that is not, not, that is not pseudonym, that's Nama Bas. Now the reactions of sinful activities go, but one still is not on the spiritual, on the pure platform yet. So that's like a glimmer of the spiritual energy, but it's not the spirit of the full spiritual platform. But one who chants purely, just like we have the example in the Shastras of uh, Ajamil, he chanted to call his uh, son Narayan, but when he called, he called without any, what we say, What's the word? He wasn't trying to gain anything by calling. He was calling the name of Narayan, who was his son. But when he called, by hearing his own voice called the pure name of the Lord, he remembered the Lord. And because of that, everything, all those sinful actions went. But he didn't, he didn't go back to the spiritual world. He had to go to uh, hardware and spend 12 more years at hardware, purifying himself further. And then at the end of those 12 years, he went back to Baptist. But getting rid of all sinful activities is not pure devotional service. It's just liberation, that's all. Mm -hmm. so, so even at Nama Basa stage, when, when devotees start chanting the holy names, but they are still committing offenses or um, still, you know, there are some sinful reactions for them because they are not chanting the Shuddha Nam at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, you have to stop committing any any activities which are contrary to devotional service. Okay. Not only sinful activities, but things that are uh, unnecessary for one's devotional service. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I might like to go to the movies or something, you know? <laughs> it's not necessary. Unless it's Krishna conscious movies, but it is different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, you know, because sometimes devotees um, do say that, you know, even if you chant, however you chant, doesn't matter. You just chant, even if you chant once, um, you know, all the sinful reactions from the previous lives, millions of lives are, are eradicated. Um, they say that it is Shuddha Nam, they say it doesn't matter. You just chant the holy name, then all the sinful reactions are gone. So uh, Krishna, Krishna sees your intention. Okay. Yeah. If he, when it's explained that, that one should chant in a humble state of mind, making oneself tolerant and giving respects to others and not looking for respect for yourself. That is the mood of, of proper chanting. One may not be on that platform, but one should practice those qualities in, in relationship to the chanting. Not that one can just, let me say, mechanically or surreptitiously just chant. Krishna is a person. He knows your intention. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, you say, Maharaj, you said that we one should not do unnecessary thing, not just the sinful, but the unnecessary things. So being in a grihastha life, being a mother, I often find myself doing many unnecessary things which got nothing to do with bhakti, but for the family life, we, I do it. 
so how what should be our consciousness at the time when we do it so well if you have to maintain the family then that that is un that is not unnecessary but you have to see what's necessary to maintain the family and do that therefore that's called gona bhakti gona bhakti means those activities which are parallel to pure bhakti but are required in order to maintain one's body and soul in this material world this is described in in Bhakti, in uh, nectar i'm sorry not in that. yeah nectar devotion and in Srimad bhagavatam now for those living in grihastha ashram there are material activities that need to be performed in order to maintain the yeah. so then you have to see what is necessary and what is extra and by cutting out the extra you find that you become more efficient at doing what is necessary and at the same time you have more time for devotional service so that's up to you to to discriminate between what's necessary and what's unnecessary okay maharaj thank you so much for your wonderful answer then love kana hari krishna thank you hari krishna mura mm-hmm. hari krishna um... Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. Thank you so much, uh, Maharaj, for your wonderful class. Um, so, uh, I have a question on austerity. Uh, we know that uh, uh, we have to uh, continue to increase our um, devotional activities as well as austerity. But uh, I, I've also heard that too much austerity makes one's heart hard, and uh, so. where to draw a line for example um, i want to uh, practice nirjal on ekadashi i am inspired by my uh, friends who are doing that uh, sometimes it's possible and uh, some days uh, it's not so uh, uh, how to know uh, that uh, what is uh, the level uh, that it's it's okay for us and uh, not uh, making the hard hard <laughs> I'm going to take a 10 second break and I'll be right back because there's something that needs to be done in my in my place and I'll be back in 10 seconds okay this moment thank you Hare Krishna, thank you for your patience. Uh, hmm. Do you want me to speak in relationship to near jalakadasi or just in general with that question? Uh, your your audio is off now. Yeah, sorry Maharaj. Uh, both in principle and also if you can uh, guide me with this uh, particular thing of example to me well there are recommended austerities that we have to perform and we can we follow that as it explains in the nectar i'm sorry in the bhagavad gita krishna describes in the 17th chapter austerities of the mind austerities of body austerities of speech so those three verses list i think there's five austerities of the body uh by there's three austerities of speech and austerities of the mind also are there so if we can practice those basic austerities there will there actually in relationship to developing certain good qualities that are needed for us to approach the lord in devotion um 
I don't have Bhagavad Gita with me. I can remember some of these things, but if you read the 17th chapter, I think it starts with verse number 13 through 13, 14, 15. 14 yeah. Yes, mother. Yeah. David, yeah. Uh, if you follow the basic austerities as recommended by the spiritual master and the Shastras, then that's enough. In relationship to what you had said, about Nirjalakadasi. Nirjalakadasi is only required if one has somehow or other failed to honor one of the Akadasis that year. You don't have to follow Nirjal if you haven't broke in Akadasi. So if you've been following all the Akadasis, then the Nirjalakadasi can be performed like any other Akadasi. The Prabhupada never followed, didn't follow near Jalakadasi, but he followed the regular. So if we say, well, because it's near Jal, we should do near Jal, um, and that uh, Prabhupada has given us the formula. We follow what Prabhupada says, and that is enough. So I don't follow near Jal unless I break in the Kadasi, then I do it. But it's not like it's required specifically. But for austerities, follow if you follow those four regulative principles as we mentioned, those things are fundamental. By doing that, then you're practically following all the austerities that are needed. And the biggest austerity is to chant 16 rounds every day. <laughs> Every day, not just some days. <laughs> That's an austerity. Day after day, year after year, life, you know, decade after decade. That's an austerity. Yeah. And also chant nicely, giving the time and attention. And that's, uh, yeah, definitely austerity. Chanting is something that's progressive. Once we develop a taste for chanting, then it's no longer an austerity. We want to get to that stage of developing a taste. It comes by chanting and by serving. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for your wonderful you. answers, guidance, and association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a beautiful class. I, I have a question. Uh, um, can, so, you, can you speak a little bit louder? <laughs> okay, my voice is not clear, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, can you hear now my voice, Maharaj? Oh, now you're coming in really good. Okay, sorry, Maharaj, my device has some problem, maybe. Uh, so my question is, uh, we say that uh, when the uh, when the soul leaves body, it's like a changing dress, right? Uh, so, but there is a pain also when the uh, soul is leaving the body. So, how do we understand that? Um, even though we say it's like a changing of a dress, but there is a pain. There is a pain uh, for the body, and also there is a pain for the family members too. So, how do we understand this uh, concept? Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> yeah, but this, most of the pain is attachment. In fact, 99% of the pain is the attachment to the body. As we give up the attachment to the body, we can give up the pain of going from one body to another. Of course, the idea is not to get any more bodies after this one. That's the whole idea. And therefore, as we free ourselves from material desires and material attachments, the pain of leaving the body also goes. And it's explained for a pure devotee that when they leave their body, it's like a flash of lightning that... Um, 
a lightning flash is so fast. So you're here, and then a flash later, you're with Krishna in the spiritual world. It's that, flat, it's that fast. For the non-devotees, their change of body is much longer, and they have to go through much suffering to go from one situation to the other. Attachment leads to pain. Give up the attachment to the body by becoming attached to Krishna and devotional service, and then you reduce pain. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Who's speaking? This is Vinita Gandharvika. Who? Vinita Gandharvika Devdasi. Okay, I'm not sure I heard that, but anyway. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Sorry, Maharaj, I don't know. Somehow my device has a problem. That's why I, I think so. You could not hear me. Please forgive me, Maharaj. Okay. She said, Vinita, Vinita Gandharvika. Vinita Gandharvika. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for your lecture. Uh, I want to ask about austerity, about for uh, many devotees uh, who don't live in temple and go to job, is one of the austerity to take only prasadam. What's about this? Yeah, that's one of the austerities, only to eat Krishna prasadam, not to eat food prepared by non-devotees or not to eat food that is not offered to the Lord. But once you get accustomed to eating Krishna Prashadam, then you don't want to do a, you don't want to eat any other food because there is that element of spiritual satisfaction that comes with taking Krishna Prashadam that's not there in eating ordinary food. And Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, what is that? Sisno Sasuka Dukha Da Agapayino Nichas Tamsi Tikna. What is that verse? Uh, uh, it's 2.13 in the, the no, 3.13 in the uh, Bhagavad Gita. 3.13. Anybody have a Bhagavad Gita? 3.13. Yeah, yes, Mara. Tadna Sanchistito Shanto Munchite Sarva Kil Bisad Bunchite Te Gampa Pam Ye Prachat Malakar. The bodies of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is first offered and sacrificed. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin. So. You're eating, you're, get, you're eating karma when you eat food that has been prepared on the outside or food that is not offered to Krishna. So karma and sinful reactions come in the way of foodstuffs directly. Mm -hmm. That's why if devotees eat food cooked by non-devotees, you're gonna, you're gonna find it's very difficult to chant the holy names of the Lord. You're going to find it's very hard to control your mind. And you also may also experience uh, strange thoughts and dreams when you eat food cooked by the non-devotees. That's something you should very, very, uh, what's the word, seriously avoid. Any food cooked by non-devotees, especially grains. I mean, if we're out traveling, we can stop and get a salad in a, you know, in these different supermarkets, they provide salads. You can take the salad and offer it to Krishna with prayers and then take prasad. Fruit also can be done like that. That's nice. A prepared food by non-devotees should be strictly avoided. If you really value your spiritual life, this is one of the more important things.
I always like to take food at Shamagori's house. It's very nice prashadam because it's Jagannath prashadam and it's cooked with such devotion. So one of my favorite activities in coming to Charlotte is having prashadam with Abhiram Saka and his family. I'm seriously saying that. That's not some nice words. <laughs> It's our favorite activity too, Maharaj. Uh, we really like after that how you say so many stories and uh, and humor and play with the kids. Uh, we really missing that, Maharaj. Me too. I'm missing that too. This is the downside of this present situation. The devotees can't get together like we used to. Yeah. But as they say. What is it? At the end of every, let me see, every, every cloud has a silver lining. So for the devotees, things will only get better in the future. We just have to go through this period. And in, this is a great opportunity to increase our devotion. Uh, yes, Maharaj. And also we are knowing the value of devotees. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Oh, Shyamaguri, Hari Wa, Hari Wa. Thank you, Maharaj. What? I haven't had lunch today, so what's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> All your favorite, everything. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice to see you, Maharaj. We haven't seen you from long time, and you know the year has passed, and you didn't come, and it's a very sad situation right now. Yeah, it's sad because the devotees can't get together like we used to. Yeah, I'm on quarantine presently. Mm. I traveled. I'm I'm in Slovenia. And I traveled out of Slovenia into Croatia, and I tried to get back in, and they put me on 14-day quarantine. So I'm on my sixth day right now, fifth day or sixth day, I can't remember. But I can't even go out. I'm not even allowed out, and nobody can come and see me. <laughs> so nice to see all the devotees online, though. It's <laughs> gives me great... Great happiness. Yes, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, I have a question. Like, you know, sometimes uh, we want to do austerities, like fasting for Chaturmasya and like Mataji was saying, Nirjal Ekadashi, but body doesn't cooperate. And so, <laughs> what to do with, in this situation? Well, don't force it. It's not necessary. The main austerity is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and follow those four regulative principles. If we can do that, then whatever other austerities we can perform, that's good. But if you find that the body is either getting sick or it's difficult, then it's better not to force it. If you can, that's good. If you can't, there's no loss. Yeah. Yeah, we have to. Prabhupada emphasized the importance of keeping good health. And of course, austerity also brings good health. But too much or unnecessary austerity can also make devotional service difficult. Thank you, Maharaj, and I'm missing cooking for you. It's... You can you can cook for me and send it by email or something. <laughs> <laughs> send it as an attachment to an email. <laughs> Thank you. I also miss your 
sweet association. Thank you. Thank you. Abby, how are we doing on time? Uh, we are good. If the devotees has question, we can ask. Otherwise, uh, we can end. And we will have more opportunities of having your association regularly. So that is very good. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for accepting our request. Uh, so we do have another program on the 23rd, right, which is in two days. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, so that's that's a specific holy day. Okay. Yeah. And then, okay. uh, however weeks you can uh, provide your guidance and association on every Friday. Uh, that's what we are requesting you to. Well, with my present situation, I have I have a lot of time. <laughs> so we would like to take advantage of that, Mara. Thank you so much. So Friday, you can put me down for Fridays as what we say, at least for now, we can keep doing every Fridays and see how things develop. Yes, Mara. Okay. Anybody else have any question? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, your Hare Holy Krishna. Master. Um, Thank you so much for the wonderful class and nice question and sessions, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for coming on Bhakti Sangha Conference. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Lavanya. Okay. Thank you, I Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Koti Koti Danbat Param. Please give your association regularly. Koti Koti Danbat Param. Srila Prabhupada Srila Guru Dev Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Hello, we shall eat. Hare Krishna. My obeisances to all the devotees. Please stay healthy. Please stay safe. And we'll be with you again soon. Thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Abhi. Thank you, Shamagori. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. All good to your services. All good to your association, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, 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 Maharaj.